Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. In today's episode of How to Cut Gemstones, once again we will be featuring topaz but in fact this type of topaz is called London Blue Topaz. The piece of rough material I'm holding now has been tumbled and has been purchased from an Australian gem dealer and it weighs 4.7 carats and comes from the wonderful land of Brazil. Blue topaz can be found in both lighter and darker tones, usually known in the trade as sky blue topaz, Swiss blue topaz and the one I'm holding which is London blue topaz. As in the case of other blue gems, the more saturated the blues tend to be, the higher the value is. So in the case of topaz, with the London blue topaz, usually it's regarded as the most valuable. Unlike the light blue topaz that can be found in nature, the London blue topaz is an iridated topaz and I will explain a bit about that later. So without further ado, let's start faceting this gem. Before we start, there's a little bit of preparation and a lot of my viewers have seen this. For those who haven't, we need to glue the gem onto what is called a dop stick. The dop stick in my case is made out of brass. I use a two-part epoxy glue and the actual dop stick is held in place in a transfer jig and the glue is set to dry overnight. In this case, I did not do a preform. I attached the stone just naturally as it was. In today's video I will be fastening what is called the Gamma Brilliant. It's an excellent design to facet and it's easy also for those people who are learning to facet or new to faceting. Not only that, it gives a lot back in return and what I mean to say by that, it gives a lot back in scintillation and brilliance. It's easy to acquire off the internet in a PDF file. So while I'm setting up at the moment, I thought I would take the time just to explain how naturally clear topaz is made to look blue through iridation. London blue topaz is typically produced by the exposure to radiation in a nuclear reactor. When topaz is exposed to fast neutrons, the radiation changes the color centers, producing the deep blue color. Subsequent heat treatment is often used to lighten the inky color. Material treated in this way is likely to be radioactive and may require several months of storage before the radioactivity decays to safe levels. There are very strict rules in place to protect not only consumers but also the cutters and gem dealers who handle these gems on a daily basis. So the girdle is now rounded out and that's an easy process where the index wheel is just free spinning and you have your quill arm set at 90 degrees. And so what you're doing is just creating a nice round shape of the gem because the actual gem wasn't preformed. So now I've got the protractor set at 45 degrees and I'm ready to start cutting the first set of 16 facets. In this scene here I need to facet the first set of 16 pavilion facets at 45 degrees. In order to do this I need to rotate through my index wheel as you can see I'm doing now. Most index wheels have 96 slots so for example if you need to cut 16 facets 
you need to cut at intervals of six. So start on let's say number six on your index wheel, cut that facet to depth. Once that's done, you move on to your next facet which will be number 12. The following facet will be number 18, then 24. So you're moving up six indexes all the time till you do a full rotation of your index wheel. So here you see I've faceted the first set of pavilion facets and I've used a 1200 grit disc and this can be followed up going over the same facets of course by using a 3000 grit disc or an 8000 pre-polish. I just use a 3000 pre-polish. The next step you see here is that I've actually faceted the girdle outline and you're using the same index settings as you did when you cut the first set of pavilion facets. So this is the best time to polish the girdle outline. Set the protractor at around 89.5 degrees. I'm using a Perspex disc with just a commercial grade diamond paste. And once you've done that, then you can go on to fastening the rest of the pavilion facets. So here's an example of where you can just see where I've just polished the rim of the girdle. It's a little bit hard to see, but it is done. And look, a, a quality gem should have a polished girdle on it. So in the following footage I've actually faceted the entire pavilion using a 3000 grit disc. Very difficult to film this as you're dealing with facets that are no bigger than a match head or even less. So the aim here is to create three rows of pavilion facets. The first row of pavilion facets are split by the second row of pavilion facets and the second row are split by the third row of pavilion facets. In order to do this you will need to select the right index number settings and also for each row there is a different protractor angle setting. The design will show this. So the next step is to polish all those pavilion facets that have been cut. I'm using a 50,000 grit diamond paste on a Perspex disc and the idea is to align the flat of the facet perfectly on the flat of the disc and float that diamond paste between the facet and the disc. And if everything is aligned properly, hopefully you'll be able to polish the flat of that facet. So here are the scenes of all the facets that have been polished in different stages. So the pavilion of the gemstone is complete. In order to facet the crown, we need to attach a brass stop stick to the pavilion side and then it's set in the transfer jig overnight and then detached the following day by heat. And as you can see now, the original dop has been detached and I'm ready to facet the crown. So the dop stick has been placed into the faceting machine quill and I have the protractor angle set at the right angle according to the specifications of the design and I'm all set to facet the crown. In many ways faceting the crown is similar to faceting the pavilion in this design. The first set of crown facets will be set to the required angle and 16 facets will be cut and then the second set of crown facets will split the first set of crown facets and the third set of crown facets will split the second set of crown facets. The most difficult aspect for many is setting the girdle width. So if you're a beginner I would cut a thick girdle. Most importantly is try to align the crown facets of the girdle with the pavilion facets. So in the following scenes you'll see that the crown facets have been cut 
The initial first set of crown facets you see here have been faceted with an 800 grit disc and then I smoothed them out with a 3000 grit disc and then all the following facets after that just simply using a 3000 pre-polished disc. So the next step is to facet the table. In order to do this, the protractor angle needs to be set at 45 degrees if you're using one of these 45 degree adapters as you can see now. Then I'll insert the dot with the gem in it and just make sure that it's level with the base plate. And then later on I will be using a 3000 grit disc and I will facet the table with that. As you can see the table has now been faceted so that means the next step will be to polish all the crown facets which also means we're coming to the end of this video so it will be over and out with the narration please like and subscribe leave some comments and don't forget to watch the final reveal so until next time everybody I'll see you again in the next video so take care it's bye for now